Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Today, we're gonna to be talking about post-production in Photoshop. So this is kind of a follow-up video to last week's video where I showed you how to set up AOVs in Cinema 4D and Redshift. I kind of forgot the important part of how to actually export these AOVs and use them for post-production. So this is kind of a follow-up video to that and hopefully it will be a useful one. Obviously, I use quite a lot of post-production for product visuals or animations, so I think it's quite an important part of the process. So hopefully you guys will find the video helpful. If you do, you already know what to do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Okay, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so we're in Cinema 4D, kind of picking up where we left off last week. We have our AOVs here, such as the Puzzle Mat, Diffuse Filter, Reflections, Refraction, Specular as well as two custom AOVs we made as well. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link somewhere on the screen for you to check that out. Okay, so we wanna be able to render this file with the AOVs, so all we need to do is go up to our Redshift render settings, and I'm going to render my regular image, so this is just the raw image you're seeing in the render view, but I'm also going to enable the multi-pass image, so this is what's going to allow us to take those AOVs and use them in whatever software we'd like. In this case, we're just doing a still visual, so I will set it up as a PSD file. This means that I can just have all the AOVs in one Photoshop file, so it's much easier than kind of exporting them as PNGs and having to drop them in manually. One important part of this is making sure you have it set to 16 bits. This is gonna allow you more control when you're adjusting the kind of uh, levels of things. You've got more color data to be able to kind of push and pull shadows and highlights. So it's really important that you set that to 16-bit. I'm not sure if Photoshop supports 32-bit. I haven't explored that too much, but usually I can get away with 16-bit for, for most things. So make sure you've got your regular image set up and your multi-pass image, save it wherever you would like and render that out and we're good to go. So we're gonna dive into Photoshop and this is the kind of final image I came to once I had done all the post-production, but let's kind of start at the beginning and I'll run you guys through my process for this particular image. So when you open your Photoshop file, you're gonna get all your multi-passes like this. Um, they're all gonna be stacked on top of each other. They're gonna be set to linear dodge add by default, so it's gonna look a little bit messy, um, but you can kind of go through these one by one and see what each one is doing. So we've exported quite a few different AOVs here, so we should have a good amount of control over our image. So we've got our AOVs, that's all good, that's looking cool. The next thing we wanna do is obviously drag in the original raw render, so just drag and drop that. And now we have that regular image there. The reason why I export the regular image uh, separately instead of adding it as a beauty pass is because I use ACES and Photoshop doesn't support ACES. So I just render that regular image and just drop that in. So we have our image with ACES and then we have our AOVs. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, cool. So I think what I'm gonna do is just go through kind of start to finish of how I built this, just going through each group and each layer um, and explaining everything and hopefully it all makes sense. So I've got everything in this group here. I like to keep everything organized. So using groups and naming everything, really, really important, especially if you're working in teams and you're passing files around. So it's just a good habit to get into if you don't already. So we're gonna start off with the bottle and I'm gonna disable this quickly. So this is the raw render. Now we exported a puzzle map AOV, so let's just enable that and let's turn it to normal. Oh, I've already done it, just so we can see what we're doing. And we wanna use this to essentially mask out different areas of our render. So you can see how I've grouped everything. I've got one for the bottle, one for the liquid, one for the glass, one for the label and one for the lid essentially breaking down every component of this render. So we're gonna start off just with the overall bottle shape and kind of go from there. Okay, so we wanna remove this from the background. Um, we wanna remove this render from the background. So we're gonna use the puzzle mat to do that. We're gonna go up and grab our magic wand tool and then select on the black background. Now that's gonna select everything except the red, green, and blue sections we have here. So whilst we have this selected, all we have to do is go to the group or the layer if you're working directly on the layer. And we're gonna come down and hit this layer mask button. 
Now, if we just hide this puzzle map. So at the moment, it's doing the opposite of what we want. It's actually cutting out the bottle when we want it to do the opposite and cut out the background. So all we need to do whilst we have our layer mask selected is hit Control I. That's gonna invert our selection. By the way, if you don't know how to set up a group, all you need to do is press this button here. That's gonna create a group for you. Or if you have your layer selected, you can press Control G. I like to do it in groups just so that I can use a bunch of adjustments within that group and not have to create a layer mask for every single layer. Okay, so we've cut out the bottle from the background. You can see I've already got this uh, new background set up and that just consists of a color fill and a gradient. You can grab these by pressing this button here and getting a solid color and a gradient. So all the gradient's doing is actually kind of just adding this lighter section at the bottom. I'm using this gray to transparent uh, gradient and the way you can set one of those up is you should have one by default here in the basics panel but if not you can grab this black and white one for example and if you just hit the top slider here this is going to give you the option for opacity and you can just drop that down to zero and that's how you can kind of create those gradients. Okay, cool. So we've got the background and we've got the bottle. It's looking good, but we want to start kind of dialing in some more detail in different areas. So I think the first step is to work on the liquid. I'm not quite happy with these dark areas here. Um, makes it look a little bit grungy, which isn't what we want for a nice product visual. So we're going to lighten those areas. And I also think we can just boost the kind of vibrancy of the liquid as a whole. So what we're actually going to do is grab one of our AOVs. So I'm going to take this refractions AOV, duplicate that by pressing Control J and dragging that into our liquid group. And I've done the same as the bottle layer. Essentially, I've grabbed the puzzle mat and just got the magic wand tool. Hold shift down to select more than one mask. Click there and then just press the layer mask to create that mask and that is the same approach I've done for all these groups. Um, once you've done it once you kind of know how to do it as many times as you want in as many different ways. So that's our liquid group setup and um, we've just dropped the refractions in. Um, by default it's going to be really bright so we're just going to drop this down to something like 30%. That looks much better and it's just helped to add a bit more vibrancy to the liquid but it is affecting the glass towards the top and the bottom, which isn't quite what we want. So I'm going to create another layer mask and I'm going to use the brush tool to essentially mask out areas of this layer that we don't want. So if you haven't used layer masks before, essentially black is going to remove anything from that layer whilst white is going to brush it back in. So whilst we have the brush tool selected and our color set to black, we can just mask out this layer like this. So I'm just doing this really quickly, but you can obviously be a bit more accurate with it. There we go. Cool, so that looks pretty good. So now that refractions is literally just affecting the liquid and that looks much better, but it's still quite dark towards the top here. So I just want to kind of fix this area and we can do that with an adjustment called a selective color. So we're gonna come down to this icon at the bottom and this is where I grab all my adjustments from. Um, they can all be found here and they're really handy because they give you a separate layer to kind of control that adjustment. So we're gonna grab the selective color and this is going to allow us to essentially adjust the values of different colors. So by default, it's gonna be set to red and you can see I can remove and add cyan to essentially change the tint of this liquid but that isn't quite what we want. What we actually want is to go to the blacks and lift these up. So to lift those up ever so slightly. And now it's looking really washed out, so we need to inject some color so we could add some yellow and maybe some magenta. Maybe a bit more yellow, maybe a bit less magenta until we get something along these lines. Okay, cool. So I think that blends in better with the liquid. Um, I'm actually just going to refer back to the original one I did. Uh, let's have a look at the values I did for that. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of look at these values and, and see how that works, but that looks a lot better. Um, you can see it with and without. 
really helps to lift those black areas and just blend the liquid together. It looks a lot better for a product visual. Okay, cool. So that's the liquid done and dusted. Then we're going to move on to the glass. Um, I think I'm just going to kind of run through these because a lot of it is just using adjustment layers instead of doing everything from scratch. Okay, so we've used the refractions AOV again, and you can see if I just disable this and enable it, it's helping to boost the glass at the bottom. And we've done kind of what we did with the liquid one where we've just created a mask and only had it focus on this area down here. So in this case, what I actually did was I started off by painting out the glass and then I just pressed Control I to invert it just so that it only affects that glass area. I then grabbed a levels adjustment and used this to brighten the top area of this glass just so it looks a little bit brighter and kind of blends in better with the background. Um, again, creating a mask just so that it only affects this area. I then grabbed another layers adjustment, uh, another levels adjustment. Let's zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. And just darken that area just to kind of give it the effect of like a drop shadow or like the lid inside being a little bit darker. Uh, so that just adds another little detail. And then finally, I grabbed a hue and saturation, enabled that, and just took some color out of these reflections. Um, originally, it was quite warm because of the way I lit the liquid, and I didn't want that for the glass. So I just took the saturation out. Not completely, because I still want a tiny bit of color tone in there, um, but minus 75 to take the majority of it out. Finally, I took the Reflections AOV, and this is a very minute detail, but I think it still adds to it nonetheless. Uh, so I took the Reflections AOV from here, which if I just turn to normal, is literally just these areas here. Took that and enabled that, and you can see that I just added some more reflections in this top section of glass. So again, it's just helping to dial in those tiny details, but they all kind of add together to make one really nice final piece. So that's the glass, onto the label, and at the moment it's looking quite dark when you compare it to the rest of the image, and it's blending a little bit too much in with the background. And if this is gonna be like a product visual on a website, we really want it to stand out, so we don't want anything to kind of get lost. Uh, so we're gonna grab this label. Let's have a look at the adjustments. So this is kind of afterwards, I've just boosted the brightness of it. So let's go through step by step about how I did this. So. First of all, I actually boosted the foil, and that is using one of the custom AOVs we made, which is this one here. And in this case where you have quite a tricky mask, um, there's a really handy tool you can use. So if I just get the magic wand tool and select a little area here, obviously we don't want to hold shift and have to manually do every single section. So what we can actually do is go up to select and similar. So this is going to select similar colors within your layer. So obviously everything is white on this layer, so it's just going to select everything but that's just a really quick way to be able to grab everything within a layer. There's a few different approaches to this, but this is the technique that I use. Um, yeah, and it's really quick and easy to do. So whilst we have that selected, I have just made a levels adjustment. And because we have that mask selected, it's going to add that mask by default to our layer. So all I've done in this case is I've just boosted it ever so slightly. So just lifted up the whites which is helping to really kind of boost that high gloss feel of the foil, um, which just, yeah, again, helps to make it stand out a bit more. I've then created another levels adjustment. This time, there's no layer mask on it. It's gonna be white by default, so it's affecting everything. And this is just to boost the overall brightness of the label. So again, just lifting the whites. But now the foil is a little bit overexposed, so I created another levels adjustment this time just darkening it ever so slightly. And I actually created another mask for this. So I put the levels within a group and created a mask for that. And that essentially now is only focusing on these overexposed areas. So you can see that it's only darkening those really bright areas there. Cool, so that's the label done and dusted onto the final piece of the puzzle, which is the lid. You can see if I just enable that and disable it. All I did was take out some of the color and fixed kind of that dark patch in the corner. So let's just dive into that. Let's enable this and kind of go through it step by step. So the first thing we did was added a hue and saturation. Again, just taking some of the color out of the lid. Um, when I was looking at reference images for the actual bottle, 
it didn't have as much warmth in it as I've actually made here. So I just took some of it out with the hue and saturation. I then created a levels adjustment and just brought down the brightness ever so slightly. So you can use this middle slider to essentially kind of affect the overall brightness. Um, so just drop that down a little bit. And then finally, again, using the selective color just to lift that kind of dark area in the corner there, uh, where it was like kind of pitch black didn't quite look right so just lifted that ever so slightly and that is the job done so this is the before and after it's not crazily different from one another but i think there's just some nice details in there which kind of help to really elevate the visual as a whole so we've lifted some of the shadows in the liquid we brightened up the label to make it stand out more we've kind of painted in some adjustments into the glass to kind of really add some details to those areas as well as just adding some small adjustments to the lid. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully I kind of explained everything well. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below or if you'd like me to do any more kind of breakdowns like this on different renders. Um, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.